In this video, I will go over how to do Z stacks on a stereo microscope and also go over how to do an extended depth of field, parallax correction, and maximum intensity projection. These will also be applicable to other microscopes in LASX. The first thing you want to do is select the Z stack option at the top. That will open a window in which you can go ahead and focus to the top of your Z stack and then hit begin. Then focus through to the bottom of your Z stack and hit end. One thing I like to do on the M205 especially is to hit the go to begin before I start my stack. Another thing to check before you hit start is the exposure time. Occasionally with fluorescence I lower this exposure time to get a faster refresh rate when I'm live and that way I can focus faster. The extended depth of field is a contrast based projection of your Z stack which you can activate either before or after you acquire your image. So to activate it before you acquire the image, you need to have a license. Please consult with your account manager or your AWSW for more information, or you can do it after. All right, so our Z stack is done. So let's go through and look through the stack by scrolling through the Z on the right. Now, if you find that you don't want to do one channel at a time, you can also go down to the project settings and switch to Lambda then Z. This will take longer, but will ensure that your Z registration is more precise. Now let's go take a look at our extended depth of field or EDOF. So there's our series and then the multi-focus image is our extended depth of field. So you can see that it does a pretty nice job of projecting a high contrast image of your Z stack. So if you don't have the license for the create EDOF button in the Z stack window, you can always go to the process tools tab, select extended depth of field, and under the EDOF settings, you can choose a reference channel. And this might depend on how clear or how many features you have in each channel. So once you've selected your reference channel, go ahead and hit apply. Once your EDOF is done, you can go under open projects and then it'll appear under scan to or scan something and multi-focus image. So you'll see that this EDOF looks exactly like the one that we did before. So if your EDOF doesn't look good, there's a couple of things you can do. One is to change that reference channel that I showed you earlier. The other is to go into your crop tool and basically edit out the really unfocused images. So the way that EDOF works is by contrast. So if it looks really hazy, it won't be able to do a good job of making an extended depth of field. The other kind of projection is a maximum intensity projection, but before we do that, we have to do an alignment called parallax correction. So you can see that as, as I scroll through the Z stack, the image shifts a little bit. Um, that's because of the stereo optics of the microscope. So under parallax correction, I will choose a couple of options here and then hit apply. Go ahead and select the corrected stack. Then go under process tools, select projection. There's a variety of different projections. I chose maximum intensity projection and that will appear as the processed image here. So let's just compare our EDOF with the maximum intensity projection. So EDOF on the left and maximum intensity projection on the right. So this concludes this tutorial on EDOF and maximum intensity projection. If you have any questions, please contact your local advanced workflow specialist.